a cheap holiday in other people's misery. Ida Siegman had been hauled up for days. Nine days earlier, workers had sealed the border to her country by dead of night. Three days earlier, the front entrance to her apartment had been blocked off by police. She had committed no crime, but Siegman was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Her apartment building was located in what had become the United States, while the street, including the sidewalk in front of her building entrance, was now part of Mexico. Siegman wanted out, so she took a chance. She shoved her bedding and other possessions out of her window and jumped. She died on the way to the hospital. She had just become the first fatality of the Trumpian Wall. Welcome to Radio Tipping Point from beautiful downtown Brigitano. And we relish in our holiday in the sun. Tonight, a sea of humanity and desperation along the Texas-Mexico border that has overwhelmed the U.S. Border Patrol. A number of agents on horseback can be seen trying to keep migrants from crossing into the country while threatening them with what appears to be horses' reins or ropes, including families like this one holding a baby when the agents get dangerously close. As they try to pass, the agent said this to them. Hey, you use your women? This is why your country Because you use your women. Angie Sims had been searching for her 25-year-old son for a week, filling a missing persons report and calling anyone who might have seen him. When the call came last August, her son, Ed Eric A. Mollix, was in a hospital in El Paso, te Texas, where he was trapped to his bed, on a ventilator, and in a medically induced coma. I heard screaming and ball whips cracking. How long? How long? How long? How long? Shame, shame, shame. The woman had climbed to the top of the border fence, but when she attempted to descend on the U.S. side, she appeared to have become stuck, the sheriff's office said on Tuesday. She was using a climbing harness, and either her foot or leg became entangled in the wall. She was trapped upside down for a significant amount of time, the sheriff's office said. Ms. Kappas said the woman appeared to have used a ladder on the Mexican side of the wall to help her reach the top. Officials also found a backpack at the scene. The authorities first received a call from emergency dispatchers on the Mexican side of the border, notifying them about the woman at about 10 p.m., and then sent American border agents and local emergency services to respond. The responders were able to get the woman down and they attempted to resuscitate her, but she was unresponsive, Ms. Kappa said. The woman was transported to a hospital where she was pronounced dead, officials said. If you smile at me, I will understand, because that is something everybody everywhere does in the same language. 
I can see by your coat, my friend, you are from the other side. There's just one thing I got to know. Can you tell me, please, who won? Six, Six years, years since, since the height, the height of, Europe's of Europe's migrant, migrant crisis, crisis, they are they still, still coming, 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 coming in lesser, in lesser numbers, numbers now, now, but this is the third straight day of arrivals. Day of arrivals. The, question the question is whether is this is whether just a temporary, temporary spike, spike, spike or whether it is the start of a summer rush to Europe's shores. We are here to welcome people, to see, to say to the people, you are alive, but we also want to say to the people, welcome in Europe. And, and your rights, your rights are, are important, important to us, we take care of you. But, but in this moment, moment we don't feel this. Feel this. For the, For the EU's, EU's frontier, frontier countries, countries like Italy, Italy, Italy migration, migration remains, remains an intensely, intensely political, political issue. issue. And, for and for some here, some here a hospitable yeah, welcome, welcome has, has worn thin. thin. thin, 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 thin. We have to do better in finding solutions to the challenges facing our border. And we have to do it for the right reasons, he said, adding that it was facts and not opinions that should direct such progress. The Trumpian wall. Sense around sound in a two inch wall. Well, I was waiting for the capitalist call. I dared to ask for sunshine and I got World War III. I'm looking over the wall and they are looking at me. Now I have a reason. Now I have a reason. Now I have a reason. And I'm still waiting. Now I have a reason. Now I've got a reason to be waiting. The Trumpian Wall. At some sections of the border, only a simple farm fence or no fence at all separates the two countries. Lithuanian authorities are planning to invest 41 million euro in a new barrier. But for now, they seem overwhelmed by the situation. Because of a growing number of illegal border crossings, Lithuania has declared a state of emergency. Mr. Mollix had suffered head trauma after the SUV he was driving with nine undocumented immigrants inside rolled over near Las Cruces, New Mexico, while Border Patrol agents pursued him at speeds up to 73 miles per hour. He died August 15th, nearly two weeks after the crash. Even by then, no one from the Border Patrol or any other law enforcement or government agency had contacted his family. They're staring all night and they're staring all day. I had no reason to be here at all. But now I've got a reason. It's no real reason. And I'm waiting at the Trumpian Wall. I've got to go over the Trumpian wall. I don't understand this thing at all. I've got to go over and over the Trumpian wall. Cartels use vehicles, many of them dangerous commercial trucks to smuggle immigrants, deadly fentanyl and other illegal cargo into Texas. The agency recorded more than 700 use of force incidents on or near the southern border in the last fiscal year. Customs and Border Protection does not disclose how many of these ended in death or how many high-speed chases take place each year. Crossing the border without documentation or helping people to do so is full of risk regardless of the circumstances and stopping such crossings and the criminal activity of smugglers is central to the Border Patrol's job. But the rising deaths raise questions about how far the agency should go 
with pursuits of smugglers and migrants, and when and how agents should engage in high-speed chases. I'm going to go over the Trumpian Wall. I'm going to go over the Trumpian Wall. Claustrophobia. There's too much paranoia. There's too many closets. Oh, when will we fall? And now I've got a reason. It's no real reason. Reason to be waiting. The Trumpian Wall. The incident was filmed from several angles on different cameras by the migrants themselves. They're firing directly at us, the man says. The language is Farsi, he's Iranian. They shot him. Oh God. Oh my God. The field is just on the Turkish side of the border with Greece. You can see the fence line and Greece beyond. Six, Six men were hit. Were hit. <laughs> Three in the leg, one in the groin, one in the chest, and one in the head. They are from Afghanistan, Pakistan and Iran. They were rushed back from the fence to Turkish ambulances and away to hospital, where we arrived a few hours later to this. She is the wife of a man called Gulzar. He was the one hit in the chest. She's just identified his body in the morgue. All we know of their story is that they had traveled from Pakistan heading for Europe, drawn to the border at the weekend when Turkey said it was open. <coughs> now he's dead, and Greece and Turkey are blaming each other for the shooting. As we were invited into the hospital by officials from the Turkish government, they released a statement saying it was the Greek police who fired on the migrants. Well, the Turkish authorities have brought us to the hospital now to see the injured. They're very, very keen that we do. We were shown a picture of a bullet they said had been removed from one of the men. In the ward, with officials present, they explained what had happened. We threw stones at them as they didn't open the border. Then they fired tear gas. Because the tear gas wasn't effective, they got out rifles and shot us with them. Outside, we met a man who'd been with Gulzar when he was shot. He was on the Turkish side. And, and, the, and the, the shooting came from the other side, is that what he's saying? So, shooting either was on the other side. Yes, so he was sat in the Turkish side and the shooting came from the other side, he said. Vigilantes on the Greek side then, or the Greek border guards? The Greek government is crying fake news. I note that the Turkish side constructs and disseminates fake news against our country. Yet one more fake news was spread today about alleged injured from Greek fire. I categorically deny it. What now, though, for her? NATO brotherly love. Welcome to Radio Tipping Point. Our show today is titled Holiday in the Sun. Customs and Border Protection, which is part of the Department of Homeland Security, has a policy stating that agents and officers can conduct high-speed chases when they determine that the law enforcement benefit and need for emergency driving outweighs the immediate and potential danger created by such emergency driving. The ACLU argues that the policy, which is an agency, sorry, which the agency publicly disclosed for the first time last month, gives agents too much discretion in determining the risk to public safety. 
say, can I have some of your purple berries? Yes, I've been eating them for six or seven weeks now. Haven't gotten sick once. Probably keep us both alive. Wooden ships on the water. Very free and easy. Easy. You know the way that it's supposed to be. Silver people on the shoreline. Let us be. Talking about very free and easy. Ceuta has long been a magnet for African migrants desperate to reach this European city. But the influx of an estimated 6,000 migrants on Monday is unprecedented. Many floated round the border fence at low tide on makeshift boats. Others swam round. One man drowned. The scream of sirens and the clank of steel on cobblestones echoed down the mean, dark streets. Frightened Mexicans peeked from behind the curtains to see military convoys stretching for blocks. First came the motorcycle outriders, then jeeps, trucks, and buses crammed with grim steel helmet U.S. troops. Rattling in their wake were the tanks. At each major intersection, a platoon peeled off and ground to a halt. Guns at the ready. The rest headed on for the sector border, the 25-mile frontier that cuts through the heart of Sonoma like a jagged piece of glass. As the troops arrived at scores of border points, cargo trucks were already unloading rolls of barbed wire, concrete posts, wooden horses, stone blocks, picks and shovels. When dawn came four hours later, a Trumpian wall divided the U.S. from Mexico. A year later, protest erupted in the United States, sparked by cruel treatment of an attempted escape named Carol Capas, who was shot and left to bleed in the no man's land between the two sides. We explored whether extended violence and further protest was likely to become a constant between the two countries. Finding that many Mexicans believed such an outcome unlikely, but felt that the Trumpian wall would stand for the rest of their lives. Horror grips us as we watch you die. All we can do is echo your anguished cries, stare as all human feelings die. We are leaving. You don't need us. Belarus is offering the migrants tourist visas, and since they don't have many other options, they are gladly taking them, mostly coming through Turkey. And then once they arrive in Belarus, they're being driven down to the Polish border and directed toward Europe, effectively as human torpedoes. I gotta go over the wall. I don't understand this thing at all. It's third rate B movie show. Cheap dialogue, cheap essential scenery. I've got to go over the wall. I want to go over the Trumpian wall. Early on August 3rd, a Border Patrol agent saw an SUV traveling slowly just north of Ferraz Cruceres. 
with what appeared to be a heavy load, according to a report from the national, sorry, from the New Mexico State Police. When the SUV swerved to avoid a port border patrol checkpoint on a lonely stretch of road about 70 miles north of the border, the agent and a colleague in a separate car started chasing it. They pursued it for about a mile before one of them clipped the vehicle and it rolled, according to local emergency dispatches recorded. The SUV was carrying migrants from Ecuador, Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. And eight of the 10 occupants were ejected. An Ecuadorian man later died. The New Mexico State Police was among the agencies that responded to the crash. Body camera footage from the state police officer captured one of the Border Patrol agents saying, our critical incident team is coming out. They'll do all the crime scene stuff. Well, not crime scene, but critical incident scene. The agent said that he and his colleague would give statements to the team, which it would share with the police. Go take your sister then by the hand, lead her away from this foreign land, far away where we might laugh again. We are leaving. You don't need us. Ahmed Al Majid can barely move his fingers. It's the morning after another cold night on the Greek island of Lesbos. Ahmed and his friends ran out of firewood long ago. Now they'll use what's left of this cardboard box to heat today's first cup of tea. Good. Ahmed is originally from Iraq. Now he's stuck in this makeshift camp. Outside, the temperatures drop to four degrees Celsius. They don't have a heater. They hardly have anything. We don't have a electric call. We don't have a bathroom. We don't have a uh, a water for washing, for swimming, you know. Uh, so uh, we have uh, a many, a many, a many refugees uh, sick, but we don't have a uh, uh, a medicine here just for uh, emergency. Uh, you know, it's, uh, so dif so difficult. We 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 face a terrible situations here. Next door is Moria's official refugee camp. It looks like a high security prison, built to keep refugees on the island until their asylum applications have been processed. The camp is hopelessly overcrowded. The application process can last more than a year, and meanwhile, and meanwhile more, people more people keep, keep coming. Keep, 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 keep. Filming is strictly forbidden, so are journalists. You are listening to Radio Tipping Point. And our show is titled Holiday in the Sun. A 42-year-old Mexican caught entering the country illegally died after he was hogtied, beaten and shocked with a taser by Border Patrol agents. The Justice Department declined to investigate. But more than a decade later, the case will be heard this year by the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights Court, an apparent first for a person killed by a U.S. law enforcement officer. If his organization had known more at the time about the team's purpose, it would have raised red flags, but instead of explaining what the teams did, 
the agency cut any mention of them out of the use of force policy. A border patrol agent in Noggles, Arizona, shot an undocumented woman who was unarmed. Marisol Garcia Alicantra in the head last June while she sat in the back seat of a car. The Nogles Police Department report noted that the Border Patrol supervisor at the scene refused to provide information to officers about what had happened in the lead up to the crash. The report also noted that a critical incident team arrived on the scene. Ms. Garcia Alicantra, a mother of three, was taken to a hospital in Tucson where doctors removed most of the bullet from her head. Three days later, she was discharged and sent to an Immigration and Customs Enforcement Detention Center where she remained for 22 days before being deported to Mexico. She said she was never interviewed by law enforcement a Customs and Border Protection officer said the FBI was in guess investigating. I, I will be king. And you, you will be queen. Though nothing will drive them away, we can beat them. Just for one day. We can be heroes just for one day. Homemade banners written with tomato paste daubed on blankets spell out their plight. These people say they are slowly being killed while the world turns its back. In some cases, corrupt guards conspire with human traffickers to abuse the detainees for ransom using social media. Other centres have been directly attacked by local militia, seeking to rob or press gang the inmates to fight. Despite all this, the facility here in Zintan is seen as the worst of them all. Over 20 officially confirmed deaths since last September bear this out. Mira Joseph was bringing food to his wife and child, he said when a Border Patrol agent on horseback in Del Rio, Texas, lashed at him with his reins and dragged him by the collar toward the Rio Grande, which in that region separates the United States from Mexico. The treatment of Mr. Joseph, an undocumented immigrant who was seeking asylum but had been deported, and other Haitian migrants by agents in September is the subject of a federal investigation after President Biden described it as outrageous and promised that there will be there will be consequences, huh? The union representing the Border Patrol agents has defended them, saying they were merely doing their jobs as thousands of migrants crossed into the small border town. It was the most humili humili humiliating experience of my life, he said in the lawsuit, which recounts his experience and those of 10 other Haitians in Del Rio and during their expulsions. The complaint accuses the government of physical and verbal abuse, inhumane treatment, and denial of due process under a public health rule that gives border officials authority to expel most people who cross into the United States illegally during the coronavirus pandemic. And it's a fair wind blowing warm out of the south over my shoulder. 
guess I will set a course and go. Just three miles from the U.S. border in Tijuana, Mexico, nearly 3,000 Ukrainians will spend the night here, sleeping on mats on the floor of what used to be a sports complex, in hopes that tomorrow they'll get the chance to cross into the U.S. We want to begin a new life in America. The more show up, the longer they wait, some waiting up to four days to cross. Enrique Lucero, Tijuana's director of migrant protection, says 400 to 600 Ukrainians arrive to the city every day. That's up from about 40 daily when the war began in February. Lucero says this spike really began in mid-March when the U.S. announced it would welcome 100,000 Ukrainians to take refuge in the country this year. Those who have made it across the border, I plan on attempting to see those folks. On Wednesday, U.S. Customs and Border Protection opened a border crossing station exclusively for Ukrainians. Lucero says they're able to process nearly 600 migrants a day, but as the number of Ukrainians arriving keeps climbing, it still might not be enough. Love that doublespeak gobbledygook. We'll try to attempt, says Biden. Try to attempt. Try to attempt. Try to attempt. You are listening to Radio Tipping Point, and our show today is titled Holiday in the Sun. In flat open country within the city, city's northern boundary, the land to the west is checkered with brown wheat fields and lush green potato gardens. Eastward stretches a no man's land where one's fertile fields lay desolate and deathly still. They could be in two different worlds, and in a sense, they are. Even the countryside outside of Sonoma is divided into east and west by a vicious, impenetrable hedge of rusty barbed wire and concrete as it snakes southward towards the partitioned city. It becomes the Trumpian Wall. Seldom in history have blocks and mortar been so malevolently employed or hated in such a return. One year old this month, the wall of shame, as it is often called, cleaves the U.S. war scarred face like an unhealed wound. Its hideousness offends the eye as it inhumanly hurts the heart. For 27 miles, it coils through the countryside, amputating proud squares and busy thoroughfares, marching insolently across graveyards and gardens, driving families and friends, transforming whole street fronts into bricked up blankness. The Trumpian Wall muses a border patrol agent is not just sad it is not just ridiculous it is schizophrenic asylum seekers who reached the UK after crossing the English Channel in small boats are to be sent to Rwanda in a controversial new immigration deal the two countries will sign off on today The government here says they'll unveil the full details later, but it's thought some single men who arrive in the UK will then be flown to the African country around 4,000 miles away while their applications to stay in the UK are processed. They soon erected a more permanent barrier across the United States. The 27 mile long wall was actually two walls with a no man's land known as the Death Strip in between. Armed with landmines, attack dogs, and barbed wire, 
and regularly patrolled by U.S. troops ready to shoot and kill any would-be escapee. It intimidated most Latinos into staying put. There are no clever messages on the Mexican side of the wall. U.S. officials regard the barricade with pride. To celebrate its anniversary, they plan to stage a parade and have already issued a commemorative postage stamp. Since its construction, said Steve Bannon, a representative of the Trumpian Wall Tourist Office, the economy has grown strong. Relations with Mexico have been stabilized and the threat of war has been removed. Freilassing sits on the German side of the Austrian border. Population 17,000, nothing much ever happens. Or at least it didn't until the great exodus of 2015, when 2,000 people a day were crossing the bridge, which is the border. Now that bridge is quiet, an average of two migrants a day make the crossing, but the Austrians would like to make it zero. The whole Austrian plan calls for the Schengen free movement zone inside Europe to be maintained by forcing people who want to claim asylum to do it before they enter the European Union. The logic of that says that people might have to ask a country they're trying to escape from to help them become a refugee. Shame, shame, shame. Wooden ships on the water, very free and easy. Easy, you know the way it's supposed to be. Silver people on the shoreline, let us be. Talking about very free and easy.